Alright, here we got my faithful Logitech Z680. Um, I bought it a long time ago, maybe 2007, like right when it came out, refurbished on eBay for uh, like $170. And uh, I've used the crap out of this thing. I've used it for video games, my 5.1 surround sound with optical. I mean, just a great great speaker um i did like in the second year i got it i accidentally kicked the grill and pushed it in so it was uh hitting the grill so i just took the grill right off i just stuck a pick in and just pulled and it came right off and it, it sounds just like it did maybe even better but i don't know um anyway the point of this video is that my left rear channel stopped working and this was my fault because when I connected it to the last time the last time I reconfigured my system I just kind of haphazard, like haphazardly put them in and the wire frayed and it shorted here I'm pretty sure I blew a fuse or something I'm not a hundred percent sure what needs to be fixed but here we go. Um, first, I don't know how to take this apart. I couldn't find a manual or anything, but I'm just gonna. All right, I've removed those screws on the sides, and sure enough, the amp just dropped off. Um, holy crap! That is like ten years of dust and cats, and I couldn't hug all the cats, but their hair is here. Um, alright, let's dig into this. Looks like there are two cords there. Uh, a blue. Those look like that's a power switch, actually, down there. More to do with the AC power. Uh, yeah, it's just messy. I'm gonna blow this all out. <laughs> alright, so, after discovering that these don't come out, I started reading and it turns out someone has taken this part before and it made it pretty easy um, basically take all the screws take them out enough to loosen them from the um, I believe they're transistors um, but it slides off of these so you loosen them all we take them all out on the perim outer perimeter and then on the internal ones it's easier to show. Take these ones out, loosen these ones, and then this will slide off and you'll have that wire hanging. And also, when you put this back together, I notice that one of the screws has a ground right here. Uh, make sure you connect that, because, yeah, you don't want to accidentally spill something on this and, I don't know, touch it. <laughs> um, Alright. I'm going to try to hold the camera here and loosen these screws. Let's see how loose I can actually get them. So, about one whole turn. One whole turn. Couple turns. We'll turn. One whole turn. Alright. Now let's see if this comes off. I swear I need a camera that straps to my head like this flashlight. Uh, oh, would you look at that? That heat sink just slid right off. Put it next to its brother. As you can see, the screws are still in there, so. You likely won't lose them. Um, all right, so this is what we got. Okay, so now I'm going to be taking this little nut, uh, holding this nut, and unscrewing the corresponding screw right here. 
Alright, I removed that nut, and there appears to be like, they mentioned it in the Logitech forums, but mine's actually inside the cover, and I see no way of taking this cover off without somehow getting that screw out. Um, Feel free to post in the comments if there is a way. Um, I'm going to try doing what they said in the review, or not the review, trying to do what they said in the uh, forum and hold on to that white standout, that plastic standout with a plier. And uh, to get to that, what I'm going to do against my better judgment is bend this metal by hand alright I bent that up who knows if I'll ever get it to look the same again but the amp doesn't do much good with a dead channel anyway so no loss Let's see if this works. Alright, here's a little tip when you're uh, taking out the white piece. Um, don't use an electric drill because it'll go too fast and it will just shred the inside of that white spacer and you won't be able to uh, extract that screw. Oh, I have to figure that one out. Alright, so after much trial and error, um, I decided that I'm pretty sure none of the tutorials I saw online mentioned going this deep into it. So, um, I'm thinking that the fuse is actually on this part, and it is one of these tubular things surrounded in rubber. Um, following the left rear positive wire, since we can assume the negatives are probably uh, common or something, but uh, this red wire traces down to the only spot I see an additional red wire in this jumbled up hot glued mess is down here the very bottom. So if we assume that each one of these fuses is each, each channel, then uh, there's four fuses here. Uh, that means we're missing a center fuse. Um, I'm not sure where that is. There's one over here. It's labeled F3. Let's go into a green, and green looks like it goes to center. So it looks like for my fuse, it's going to be F1 for the left, left rear. Looks like it's going to be F1. Looks like F2 is going to be. A gray wire, so I have to Looks like it's gonna be right rear. F four is an orange wire. It looks like it's going to left front. F5 is a brown wire. Looks like hmm. brown wire. Okay, looks like brown is going to be right front. So F5 is right front. And it looks like, yeah, like I said, F3 is center. 
I don't see the subwoofer one. That's probably a bigger fuse somewhere else. So yeah, uh, I'm going to cut ahead, and before you go into this, these are some very big capacitors inside this unit. So before you go haphazardly digging in, uh, I don't know, just don't touch these. <laughs> you probably drain them with a resistor if you wanted to be really safe, but just probably be safest to turn off with the power switch down here before you unplug it from the wall so it drains all the residual energy hopefully um, since it looks like it comes in from the wall and through the switch so um, yeah don't kill yourself I take no responsibility for you killing yourself with these giant ass capacitors thank you we're going to fire up the trusty voltmeter here on uh, continuity mode and check these fuses. I guess we'll just check the top one. Well, which one's visible? Check this one. That one's good. Alright. So let's check the bad one. Well, supposedly bad one. Sure enough, no continuity. Check another random one. And we have continuity. So, sure enough, that fuse is bad. It's going to have to come out. Since it's soldered on there, I might be able to get away with superheating this side and just pulling it out and then soldering it in and praying. But I'm going to go ahead and take the other side off, which looks like it's going to involve bending the bottom part here and uh, taking out these weird D-sub uh, screws. And then maybe something with the power button. Not sure yet. Um, got my solder iron solder now. I'll uh, heat it up here. Here we go. Alright, so I discovered I might as well just access the solder points from the bottom here since it's conveniently located and not take this off because it looks I started taking off these two bottom screws that are here and here and they're not cooperating and there's another one here and I just don't have to do it so I'm not gonna but uh, it looks like if you did you'd have to take this thing off which is like your standard uh, fuse with your uh, nut on there. Um, this looks like you might have to take off this goo, maybe sound dampener or whatever it is, maybe Loctite substance, and push on these clips and pop it out after disconnecting these two. Um, these I've seen before and you just pry them and they kind of open and open up then you can just slide this down the cord I believe um, but yeah I'm just gonna do this because it's gonna be a lot quicker alright so I got the fuse out here's the offender um, I can read off the markings on here so I can type them later uh, looks like it says DRS parenthesis open parenthesis six O three on that side. No other writing that I can see. I'm gonna take this plastic sheathing off. Let's see, looks like now that I notice. Looks like it's just inside of maybe a hmm, container of some sort. Alright, after finessing the caps off, being careful not to break the glass and shoving it in my finger, um, it looks like this fuse is a 239. 
Okay, it looks like it says it is a E two V two five zero V. Oh, two A. <laughs> uh, e two amps. V. One thing I wanted to show is that to get to the solder points here, I just bent this metal. It is not going to look pretty when I'm done. But, um, yeah, I'm going to keep this amplifier probably for a very long time since I don't really like 7.1. And 5.1 suits me pretty well. Um, yeah, don't be afraid to rip into her. Just be careful when you're bending this that you're not pushing against this guy for leverage like I was. Alright, so I just came back from Radio Shack and I got these slow blow 2 amp 250 volt fuses. The filaments look a little different, um, a little thinner. So I hope that's not a big deal, but they are 20 millimeter by 5 millimeter. So got four of them for like 350. You can buy them on eBay for about six bucks, so if you don't want to go to Radio Shack. And when you're putting the screws back on the um, heat sink clamp, make sure you don't over tighten them. It's kind of scary, but they will break those, so don't do it. Alright, this is another one of those common sense things, but make sure that these screws are actually tight. Because when you fit the washer on there and the nut and then tighten it down, it feels tight. But unless you're actually torquing it down, holding the nut at the same time, going to get probably some vibration, I predict, off of these loose screws. Probably not good for the motherboard either, or the main board. Uh, the bends <laughs> didn't go away, so don't expect them to. I mean, I tried to bend it back as good as I could, but you can still tell that everything's back together. Let's try it out. And the final product.